So I'm uh, Pastor Jeff, and this is uh, my 30th uh, Christmas here at New Hope, and it's just great to see a room filled with um, precious uh, souls uh, from young to uh, old like me. Um, so uh, I'm praying for all of us tonight that uh, we would make room in our heart. Uh, you know, we're going to be thinking about this idea of, of moving tonight, this idea that uh, God wants to do something in each uh, one of us. So I'm praying that uh, there will be a warm heart move in as many people as the Spirit of God will move into on this Christmas Eve night. So we're all moving. Again, we all moved into the room this evening. Um, our bodies are moving. We can see that, you know, as our bodies are moving. Uh, we know that our minds are moving. Uh, as before you came in, uh, probably t today your mind's been moving in all kinds of ways, maybe planning that you were going to come to the 4 o'clock. Your mind's moving to what's going to happen after this. So our, our bodies are moving. Our minds are moving. Our hearts are moving, especially this time of year. Uh, again, I just uh, enjoy, I've got five grandchildren, so watching the grandchildren, watch the children of the, of the school around here, and my heart just moves. All the songs of, this, uh, of the season, the songs tonight, songs of Christmas long before this, uh, just, there's so many things that can move our hearts that we have this, uh, that we have love in so many ways, so our hearts will, will move. So there's, there's ways that we are moving that we see. All of us can see the ways that we're moving. But you know, there are so many other things that, we, that are moving that we can't see. So again, you can see my lips flapping tonight, but you can't see the sound waves coming out that's landing on your ears, making you think, maybe hopefully stirring something in your heart. So there, there's all kinds of things that we can't see. Before uh, radio was invented, it was already there, moving. Before television was invented, it, things were already there moving. Before the internet came into existence, it was already there moving. And somehow we figured out how to, uh, I mean, there's something moving right now. I could ask Siri something right now, uh, and it, there would be an answer. So there's all kinds of things that we don't see that are moving. Hey, I thought uh, maybe for just a couple of moments, uh, we could all do some moving. It's Christmas Eve, so it'd be great to just have a kind of warm Christmas greeting uh, with one another. So you can do that with handshakes, but again, um, a disclaimer, it's cold and flu season. So maybe instead of a handshake, you could do an elbow bump or a high five or a fist bump or um, a germ-free hug. But let's, let's stand up and move and just say Merry Christmas to those that are around you. All right, you can uh, go ahead and have a seat. Some of you are praying that that went way too long. Some of you would like to keep going. But uh, hey, at the end of the message this evening, I'm going to ask you to uh, consider moving again. So there's going to be an invitation to come to the manger. Again, you got these cards when you came in, come to the manger. We've got the three mangers up here. So this section can go over here. This section can go over here. This section, I'll put this one down. And it's going to be an invitation to Move if Jesus moves you this evening through this message. The move the, to Jesus with the idea of taking a knee if you're able to, or just to maybe bow humbly and we'll see how it works. So, before any of us were born, we were already moving. When we were in our mother's womb, we were moving. I was looking up at Google. Our hearts start to beat. Our hearts start to move like three, four weeks into conception in our mother's womb. Eventually, our legs uh, start growing, our arms start growing, and we start moving in our mother's womb, and she can feel the moves. And sometimes you can place your hand on a pregnant mother's, but always with permission, please. Always ask permission first. But she'll... You'll feel the baby move, and so we're, we're always, we, we're, we're moving even before we're, and so life is about moving. My mother loves to tell the story of my birth. When I was uh, being born, you know, contractions, things were starting to move and that, uh, but the doctor that was attending her thought maybe she, he had a few more minutes and uh, stepped out of the room, and I decided... It's time to come. And so off I came, and the doctor came back in and had to 
put a lot of stitches in my mother. So I, she always tells the story of how much pain I caused her when I was born. Thankfully, I never caused her any more pain since that moment. So again, she loves to tell that story. It's a moving story when she tells it. So no matter our age this evening, we're all moving. A variety of speeds, obviously. Our children are moving. There's going to be a lot of moving with a crowd this side with the children. And then some people that are moving very slowly because they're old and they just, you know, some age things have happened. And so there's just a lot of a variety of speeds. But we're all moving. We're all still moving. So uh, since uh, last year, well, we've been doing a lot of uh, moving. As we know, we oftentimes will sit and watch others move move with amazing ability. So as we know, the football season is about to get over, especially for the Packers. But again, we still watch them because it's just amazing to watch those massive bodies and those fast bodies move the way they can move. Basketball is starting, and so we'll watch basketball and the amazing moves and some of these, just, they can jump so high and slam dunk the, the ball. There's, there's soccer, there's, there's baseball, and that comes back in. So there's all this movement. Many young ladies, young, young, young boys, they play this soccer kind of soccer goes around, and they're just moving, 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 moving. So there's just all this moving that uh, takes place. Uh, some of you, you, you like to, I mean, you would probably rather right now be moving out in the woods, moving by a lake, moving by the, a river. I've already seen some people out ice fishing. And we just like to move to get out there to, to do some hunting, to do some fishing. We just, we like to move. Moving is, moving is living. So again, since last Christmas, we've had a whole year of moving. That's how we are here tonight. We've been moving. All of us had birthdays at some times. We moved to the date of our birthday. We maybe celebrated it, recognized it, and moved on, and it will be another year. Maybe we've all probably, for those of us who are married, we had an anniversary. Again, we moved to that date and then moved past it this last June. My wife and I, we celebrated 40 years of marriage. So it was a major anniversary, but we're moving past it. Now we're in our 41st. Uh, some of you, maybe you're, it's your first year of marriage. And it's a new move. You're learning so much about one another. For some of you, uh, it's the first year of having a baby. Man, all the moves that you get to make <laughs> with a new baby. Some of you, um, some of you, um, well, you, maybe it was uh, this, this deal where uh, for some of our children, it's a new grade, a new teacher. Some new friends. They're just you're just always moving. Some some of you watch. Some of you walk in tonight and you've you've graduated. Some of you have just gotten engaged. Some of you are getting closer towards retirement. Some of you had a job that you've been doing for so many years, moving, moving, moving through that job. Some of you maybe had a job that ended, and you're waiting for that next job to still begin. So there's all kinds of moving. Some of you have moved maybe from one city to another city, from one state to another state. Some have moved into a house. Some have moved into an apartment. Some have moved into a condo. Some have moved into an assisted living facility. We're just always moving, moving, moving. As we're moving in that, we, we uh, know that there's all these things that are going to keep moving in our lives. So many of the moves that we do are planned moves. As many as we can make, it's a planned move. More likely, you plan to come at the 4 o'clock Christmas Eve worship celebration this evening. And all kinds of other planned moves throughout the year. You've got, your, you've got the plans for Christmas after you leave here. The food you're going to eat, the presents, the, you got it all timed up. And then tomorrow morning and tomorrow during the day, just all kinds of things. Plan, plan, plan. But any uh, unplanned moves? over this last year, unexpected moves this last year, maybe something with your health, kind of going along, going along, going along, and then all of a sudden, maybe a surgery that was unplanned, maybe uh, you thought the relationship was going to work, you thought it was, you were planning for it to work, and then all of a sudden, just, did anybody uh, have 
one, two, half a dozen of unexpected moves when someone that you really, really cared about, they died. And they're not moving anymore here with you. So there's all kinds of uh, moves. Again, we're all going to be moving through the rest of this evening. We're going to get up, walk out, get into our cars, go to our homes, go to our apartments, go to our condos. Maybe some of you have guests and they'll go to a hotel. And when we get to wherever we're going, we're going to move from room to room to room. We'll go to bed tonight in one room wake up and move into all the other rooms and maybe move from one house to another house. You're just going to keep moving as we move through Christmas. When it comes to this night and the reason that we're here, it's because heaven moved to earth. That's why we're here. That's why we have a manger. Jesus has always lived in the glories of heaven, but for a certain span of time, he left the glories of heaven and came into this world. And we read through from eyewitnesses that when he was born, he was wrapped in these swaddling cloths, and then he was laid in a manger, as we heard in the drama skit. Jesus moved. We've been uh, taking Christmas steps around here. We've been thinking about this idea of Christmas steps, that the people of the Christmas story, they were real people. They lived in real places at a real time. They took real steps. And they went from place to place. They went in, at real locations. So we know that one of the locations was this village called Nazareth. We know that Mary and Joseph were there. They maybe had grown up there. They had become engaged there, betrothed there. The Holy Spirit, or an angel, uh, appeared to Mary and said, you were going to have a son you're going to name his name Jesus. An angel appeared to Joseph to, as we heard. And so they were there in Nazareth, but then the census came and they had to take steps to Bethlehem. Why are we saying a little town of Bethlehem? Why are we saying away in a manger when they put him in the manger? We read, if you read into Matthew chapter 2, that we read that Mary and Joseph have to take real steps with the infant Jesus and carry him away from Bethlehem. And they went down and lived for in Egypt for a while. And then they were called out of Egypt and took steps and eventually ended up back in Nazareth. We read that during Jesus' childhood that his parents and many other relatives, and that, they would probably yearly take steps down to Jerusalem to the temple and observe the Passover, to observe the promises of God and pray and wait in expectation for the promises of God to be fulfilled. We know that Jesus, he was 12 years old. At that time, probably he had some younger brothers and sisters from Mary and Joseph. And he went to Jerusalem. And a little bit later, we read when he's doing his, what we call the public ministry, he goes to Jerusalem yearly with his disciples. We, we read that as Jesus is moving during those three years, that sometimes he's moving around the Sea of Galilee. There's some beaches there. And he'll teach the people. Some of the people will come and he'll touch the people and they'll be healed by, with the move of Jesus in them. Sometimes their, their hearts will be moved, their bodies will be moved, their minds will be moved with the teaching. Sometimes he gets on a boat and goes to one side and some moves happen over there and then moves back on to, to the other side and some moves happen there. We know that Jesus, he goes from village to village to village and as he's going to those villages... Sometimes he'll attend a wedding. Ah, there's a young man and a young girl that's going to get married, and they've got all these moves, all these dreams ahead of them. Sometimes Jesus probably goes when there's a, a baby that's born, and they have a celebration, and Jesus is there celebrating the birth of a new baby. We know that Jesus, he's oftentimes, when he goes into these villages, he gets invited to somebody's home, and he takes steps and moves and sits at a table and Eat some meal with them. We know that as Jesus is moving from place to place and from village to village and from house to house, that sometimes where there's a death. And Jesus does some things with some of those deaths that's never been done before. 
And people start moving in a different way and their hearts start moving in a different way and their minds start moving in a different way. But really the reason that we're here tonight is not just because of the birth of Jesus and all the other moves. There's one move that brings us here tonight. Jesus moves to the cross. He willingly moves to the cross. Read that a part of that moving to the cross was that he was carrying his cross beam for a while until he couldn't carry it anymore. His body failed him. He moved and he allowed himself to be moved to have his hands nailed into the cross and to his feet nailed into the cross. And for the next few hours, he would keep moving. And suffering and agony is kind of hard to imagine. Until we are told he has one last move. And he breathes out his last breath. And he doesn't move anymore. Some people will come and take him down from the cross. Some other people will come and wrap his body and carry his lifeless, non-moving body into a tomb. They'll seal a big rock. And he lays in that darkness, not moving. The king of the universe, the creator of all, not moving until Easter. Easter morning, what a move. What a move. And he's still moving today. Jesus, because of that, that cross, that resurrection, starts in a manger. But it doesn't stop there. That's just the first move. Now he's moving. He's always going to be moving. He's moving tonight. He move, he's moving in your hearts. He's moving in your minds. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. In fact, we can say what we're going to read from a Bible passage in, the, in, in a moment is that Jesus is moving everybody. He moves every girl, every boy, every man, every woman, all around this world, all times around this world. It's right here in the scripture that we're going to read, this Bible passage that we're going to read. Jesus is moving everybody, and everybody will move because of who this Jesus is. So in Philippians chapter 2, it says this, Jesus emptied himself, he moved, he moved to empty himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of us. As we came out of a mother's womb, Jesus comes out of a mother's womb. And being found in human form, just as we are in moving, just like we do, Jesus humbled himself to become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. But because of all that, then it says, but therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Think of the most famous name, the most popular name, the most viral name, the most, your favorite sports star, and Jesus' name is so far above it. Because whatever name you think of, maybe it's been around 30 years, 40 years, 80 years, but the name of Jesus is why we're here tonight. That the name uh, that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, and here we go, here we go, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, right now in heaven. Those angels that broke through that sky that, that first night, announcing to the shepherds, they kneel. There's moments of kneeling in heaven. And then it goes on and says, and, and, and every knee shall bow on earth. We have the invitation to take a knee before Jesus. And not only on earth, but every knee under the earth, it says. And that every tongue Every boy, every girl, every man, every woman will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is always moving to people first. He's inviting us to move with him. One of the names we hear about for Jesus at this time of year over and over again is Emmanuel, 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 which means, you know, God with us, God moving with us. 
Like not just leaving us here for a few years, a few decades of life for us to move however we want, but God wants to move with us in all of our moves. The invitation of Jesus always to his first disciples and still to us and all who follow, all who have their hearts moved. Jesus just uses two words. Follow me. Move with me. We're all aware that not all are moving with Jesus. Some are moving away. Some are moving away. But Jesus is always inviting, even those that are still far away. It's what we sang about in that somewhere in your silent night. He's always inviting. He's inviting you if you've been moving far away. He's inviting you to walk with him. And as Jesus invites some will move with. Oh, the wonder of who this Jesus is. But make no mistake, all will be moved by Jesus. All of us in this room will be moved by Jesus. Will we be moved with Jesus? So as we start wrapping up, are we moving with Jesus? Are we moving with Jesus? If you're moving with Jesus, as so many of us are, and as you're thinking about, maybe should I start moving with Jesus? Have you ever considered taking a knee? Taking a knee, moving with Jesus. I'm going to make the case in these few moments that we have left that it's a good move to take a knee with Jesus. We could say it like this, it's a soul good move. Not just a so good. It's a so good move to take a knee with Jesus. So it's been my practice uh, every morning for a lot of years. I couldn't even tell you when it started in that. I roll out of bed and I just drop to my knees. Not for long. Maybe 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. Oftentimes as I drop to my knees and I'm waking up and just saying, oh God, for your unfailing love, for your mercy. Then usually I'm praying, God, will you stir a warm affection in those that I love? Then I get up and get moving. Oftentimes I uh, uh, get ready and shave, and then I, I go and exercise. I like moving exercises. Many of us are wearing some kind of an exercise measuring device. I got a little Fitbit. I'm way over 10,000 steps, so I'm kind of proud, and I'll get some more doing this, I'm sure. So you move. You, maybe you'll get some kind of that. And so we like to move. We like to move. We like to move. But I just I love to move on my knees. Uh, a little bit after exercise, I uh, take some time and do what we call daily 15 around here. And I always start a portion of my daily 15 with the words of Psalm 95, and it goes like this. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, come, let us make, make a joyful noise to him. And, and, and uh, I'm sorry, God, I shouldn't know this because I've been doing it for 30 years. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights and the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. I want to move with that kind of God. I want to kneel before that kind of God. A little while later in that daily 15, I'll drop to my knees once again and pray the Lord's Prayer on my knees. So why? Why do I do that? Oh, Jesus is calling to me. He's calling to you. And as I move through this life, I don't move as fast as I used to. Someday, I move a whole lot slower than I even moving now. And someday, like Jesus, there will be a last breath and I won't be moving anymore. But because of who this Jesus is, it will give me that first breath of all eternity. And it won't be a new practice for me to start having moments of kneeling in heaven praying that it won't be a new practice for you. So Jesus is calling. Follow me. 
Take a knee. So 